Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about bearing friction. So a bearing is an object used to connect a rotating shaft to a stationary object. So here we've got an example of a bearing on a train car. So the wheel and the axle itself are going to be rotating as this moves along the track, but the rest of the train car is not. So we need some way to connect the rotating object to the non-rotating object, uh, and that's the bearing right here. So uh, Here's an isolated bearing, so just the bearing itself. Uh, this is a ball bearing, it'd be different than what's on the train here. Uh, but in the middle we'd have the shaft that rotates, and on the outside we would have the pillow block or whatever else is out there uh, that is the non-rotating base of this bearing. Um, so most bearings are designed to minimize friction, but some friction is inevitably going to cause resistance to the rotation uh, of our inside piece uh, in many cases. All right, so it's also important to talk about the types of bearings that we might see. So the simplest bearing, the journal or the plane bearing, so two different names for the same thing, uh, is simply a shaft uh, in a kind of housing uh, that is slightly larger than the shaft. So we have a little bit of room for this to rotate. Generally, we're gonna throw some lubrication in there, so some sort of grease or oil. Um, and the simplest bearings are going to um, kind of give us the most resistance, but at the same time, they are simple, so they're easier to maintain. Uh, other bearings, we've got ball bearings or roller bearings. So this is a picture here of ball bearings. Uh, so we've got the inside surface, which is gonna be connected to the rotating shaft. Outside surface would be kind of housed stationary, and the rolling uh, balls are going to allow us to rotate with minimal friction. Roller bearings are more or less the same thing, except rather than balls, you're going to use tiny cylinders that are gonna roll as this moves. Uh, so these are a little more complex, a little bit less friction generally. Uh, finally, we've got hydrodynamic bearings. Uh, so I don't have a picture of it for this because it would look very similar to journal or plane bearings on the outside. Uh, the one difference is you rotate it fast enough and or you draw lubrication in uh, fast enough that the Bearings are actually floating. There's a layer of fluid that's gonna be constantly separating the shaft and the bearing. And so it becomes a fluid mechanics problem at some point. Here, we're gonna focus on the journal or plane bearings, which is going to be the simple bearing type uh, where we're kind of moving at low speeds, generally high loads uh, is where we're gonna use this. So bowler and uh, roller and ball bearings are gonna be a subject for machine dynamics. Hydrodynamic bearings are a subject for fluid mechanics. All right, so if we look at a free body diagram of this, here we've got the central shaft in the middle. Uh, it's gonna be rotating. Uh, and we've got what we're gonna call the pillow block uh, on the outside or the kind of the bearing is this interface. Uh, so if it's rotating in this direction and we kind of remove the background, so just look at a free body diagram of the shaft itself, the forces at play would be the following. Number one, we would have the load force. So this is, for our train example, is the force of the train pushing down on the axle. Uh, and generally these are gonna be, uh, where we want to use journal or plane bearings, these are gonna be pretty large loads. Um, we're also gonna have a normal force. So this is what the, the supporting force from our bearing. Um, and we are gonna have some sort of friction force. So generally you know, at a stop, the axle and the bearing would be in contact at the bottom. Uh, as this thing starts to rotate, we have this friction force. You're actually going to get a small amount of climb. It's going to kind of move, that contact point is going to move up uh, one side a bit um, just to keep things evened out. Uh, but it's generally going to be small. So these are the place, forces in play. We've got normal force, load force, friction force. All right, so here we have that diagram. I've moved it up a little bit so that angle theta is the climb angle. Uh, and journal bearings, we generally want to keep that pretty small. And so if we assume the shaft is rotating at a near constant speed, uh, we're gonna use our kinetic coefficient of friction. Uh, we would have friction force is simply mu k times Fn. So if we know the normal force, we know the coefficient of friction, we can figure out that friction force. Uh, if the loads are large and speeds are generally low, it's usually safe to assume that theta is very small. So therefore the normal force is approximately equal to the load force. That's gonna be our approximation there. Uh, and generally we only want to use journal bearings when loads are large and speeds are low. Uh, that is the kind of the sweet spot for this type of bearing. 
Uh, and this leads to the following equation. So if you want to know the moment uh, for the resistance, the moment due to friction, uh, it'd simply be the friction force, which is mu k times f load, uh, times so force times distance times the radius of the shaft. So m losses is the torque lost to bearing friction in this case. So a pretty simple formula. Coefficient of friction times the load force times the radius of the shaft gives us the moment uh, of the losses due to friction. All right, so most of these things, bearing in friction and wheels, uh, bearings tend to support axles, axles tend to support wheels. So if we wanna know, we have an axle and a bearing supporting a moving object. Uh, we wanna know what is the kind of friction force from, from this bearing that's gonna slow the object down. Uh, there's simply one extra step in all of this. So here we've got our train again. If I know the moment due to losses in each wheel, I want to figure out what is the overall kind of net effect on the train uh, slowing this down. Uh, and to find that resistance, we simply multiply the moment uh, in the bearing by the radius of the wheel. So you do want to be careful here. There is another radius in here, uh, but the radius in the wheel in this part is not the same as the radius of the axle uh, in the original bearing friction uh, setup. So the frictional losses or the kind of force that we would model on the moving object is the radius of the wheel times the moment of losses. Uh, and you do want to be a little bit careful with this as well. It does not include air resistance, rolling resistance. So air resistance is obviously the object moving through air. Uh, also going to be a significant uh, part of this. It may be slowing down the train car. Uh, and then rolling resistance is the friction or deformation we get at uh, the interface between the wheel and the uh, train track. So rolling resistance can be pretty small in a train, but if you have very squishy tires, like if you are running some sort of off-road event, rolling resistance is much more important. So, but this is one, the bearing losses is one piece uh, of the puzzle at least. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.